I'm healthy. I'm healthy right now. I'm tired, but I'm healthy. And again, what I'm hoping is I'm making deposits. calling it audible everyone dropping the volume down a little bit today was gonna go further decided to drop it down why because I'm tired and the legs are barking at me and I'm just uh, listening to the body right that's how we do it around here so but we will talk about the four 100 mile weeks back to back to back to back here in a little bit boys how's your how's your breakfast doing oh man I wish I could partake in that right now but I gotta go run all right love you hun Mwah. Ciao, ciao. All right, I'll be back in about an hour. Getting, getting ready for the live stream. In case you missed it, everyone. The, uh, ooh, here we go, here we go. So we did a live stream yesterday afternoon, 1 p.m., upper right-hand corner, in case you missed it. We talked, it was an ask me anything type of live stream. So I'm bringing, bringing shoes out, we're getting ready. There we go. Okay, you haven't really, hold on one sec, haven't really seen the shooty over from this angle in a little while. This is where the, the camera sits right here in the corner shooting this way. All right, so that's how, that's how we do it here in here in the shooty. All right, getting set up. Oh yeah, got to go get the uh, computer. Okay, okay, okay. There we go. <laughs> so the computer literally sits on top of shoe boxes. Almost forgot my tea. Can't do a live stream without the tea. All right, now, now we're ready to go live. All right, here we go. Test one, two, three, test, 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 test one, two, three, test, 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 test one, two, three. And we're back from the live stream. That was fun, everyone. Oh my goodness, if my voice sounds a little hoarse, it's because I just spoke for the last hour. And uh, also, I hope you enjoyed seeing me set up the live stream here in the studio, give you a little behind the scenes. And oh man, and shout out to the, I think a thousand people tuned in over the course of an hour. That's absolutely amazing. And a lot, it was an ask me anything live stream. Sometimes, actually most of the time, we do topic-based live streams. This was an ask me anything. So we covered the Tokyo Olympics coming up. We Maybe we talked about training uh, in the time of the coronavirus. We talked about marathon training plans. We talked about running shoes, um, like trail running shoes especially, because as the snow begins to melt in the Northern Hemisphere at least, I think everyone is excited to get back out onto those trails. So it was a great time. And again, shout out to, and again, shout out to the Super Chats. Oh my goodness. Help support the channel in a big, big way. All right, here is the deal, everyone. Um, I just completed, kind of crazy, but the uh, highest volume of training in my entire life over the course of a month. All right, now let me break this down for you. I am still considering myself and putting myself into the rookie category with respect to marathon racing and training, all right? And on the roads, all right? I have a lot more experience with trail running and training for marathons and ultra marathons on the trails, but on the roads, oh, hold on, and I'm back. I just had to change the settings on the camera. I'm done, I'm done with this light. I've been saving money, pinching pennies. I'm going, maybe, I think today, I think today is the day I'm gonna buy a dome light for here in the studio, I'm just so tired of this. This light is overheating. So anyway, enough of that. Okay, back to uh, my highest volume ever is that uh, I would not feel comfortable running at 100 plus mile weeks. And here it is on your screen, okay? Five weeks in a row, 100 mile plus weeks. Solid, solid month of training. Again, I've never done this before where I've held 100 plus mile weeks. For this amount of time very exciting for me um again building that aerobic engine that i'm always talking about uh so it's unfortunate now that i can't race in an actual race but that's okay we'll still do the demore global running virtual race on april 19th 
uh, but I wouldn't feel comfortable doing this type of volume without my experience at the University of Colorado, where we were high volume runners. Also, my ultra running background, where I was training at, you know, training at, you know, 90 to 110 miles a week with high vertical, all right? But there are some lessons that I've learned over the past month with high volume of training, and it connects back to Cleveland, uh, the Cleveland Marathon from spring 2019. So if you've been watching the channel for over a year, shout out to you. Uh, you're a long dedicated fan. I appreciate it. Is that my training block for the Cleveland Marathon was 20 weeks. It was 20. It was my first marathon on the roads. I got a, maybe a little over ambitious. It was too long. It was just way too long. And for those that don't know, I ended up getting a stress reaction in the second or third metatarsal on the top of my foot, meaning my bone was a slight crack in the bone because my volume was high for too long. Okay, and this, and then um, fast forwarding to this marathon training block block with Hamburg, I was discerning, trying to figure out, you know, gosh, just back in January, which is like a snap of the finger, I decided on a 14 week training block. All right, 14 weeks, so a little over th about three and a half months. I felt good about it, but now here's the trick. I am. After five weeks of 100 plus mile weeks, my legs, I can officially say, are tired. They're tired, everyone. I, I, it takes a lot to get my, my body and my legs tired, but I can officially say, my, if you've been following the runs over the past five days on Strava, you can tell I'm running slower and I'm running slower. Like I just, I'm, I'm, um, I'm trying to absorb the training. Now, I did run really hard on Wednesday, I get it, uh, but, at the end of the day, my legs are tired, and so I'm now discerning the future for, I guess it'll be, yeah, it'll be New York City in the future. 14 weeks actually is not enough uh, of a training block for me. I'm now going to bump it up. I do believe it's, it's either going to be 15, but most likely 16 weeks. For, and this is the big lesson for me. Why 16 weeks and not 14 weeks? I want one more week at the beginning of the training block to build up my volume a little slower, okay? All right? And, and I want to make sure, and I got to bookmark this vlog to make sure I remember, I want to make sure I remember to build in that down week in my training in uh, around, I don't know yet exactly, but I think like six or seven weeks out from race day, meaning I dropped my volume down. I didn't do that. Um, I wish I would have, but I want those two extra weeks to work with. So that's my big lesson of the day. And I hope, you know, passing it, passing it on to you. If you're training for your first marathon or maybe fall 2020 or spring 2021, um, this is, and again, I'm just, I'm just, uh, communicating what I'm literally learning in real time because I'm listening to the body and dropping volume. I'm um, sorry. Uh, adapting my training, well, it's too late in this training block, but for the future, adapting my training block from 14 to 16 weeks, uh, slower buildup in mileage, and then make sure I have that down week, all right? And one other lesson before we get to that question of the day is that I think many of you have probably figured out that I'm a little bit of a risk taker. I like taking what I, I, I tell myself are calculated risks. So. Uh, the high volume for this amount of time, yeah, it's a little bit of a calculated risk. Why? Because of my injury history. Now, I'm healthy. I'm healthy right now. I'm tired, but I'm healthy. And again, what I'm hoping is I'm making deposits every day into that aerobic bank account, all right? It's all about that aerobic bank account. Why? Because, yes, it's going to be fun to race, race on April 19th. But it's really, frankly, at this point, everyone, I'm putting bank deposits in uh, for the aerobic system uh, for New York City for, I know it's but six months from now on, I think it's November 1st, the New York City Marathon. So calculated risks is another lesson that I want to pass on to you. Um, and it's a balance. And yes, sometimes the calculated risk will not work. Just being really frank with you. And it didn't work for Cleveland, uh, but I would say it did work for Amsterdam. Even though I went out too fast in that race, it did work in the, in the sense that 
Um, I ran a, a, mar a half marathon PR and ran a pretty good uh, first road marathon of 223. Okay, I'm stopping there. And that question of the day, here we go. And listen, I do a lot of talking. I appreciate you listening here in the studio, but I think this is a really important time to scroll down, scroll down, however you're scrolling on your phone, scroll down to the comments. All right, so here we go. What is in the last two years, one of the biggest lessons that you have learned and maybe it's from a mistake, okay? And that's okay, all right? Calculated risks, again, sometimes they work, sometimes they don't work, but what is a lesson you have learned from your training over the past two years? You might have to hit pause and think, reflect, maybe open Strava and start scrolling through all of your training and just see, oh yeah, that was, eh, that didn't quite work. Oh, this worked really well. Um, so that is the goal right now is for you to go down into the comments and just start jumping into those conversations so we can help each other um, get better and train well and train smart and reach our goals. Okay, everyone, you're the best. Oh man, we're gonna toss it back, yes, to the Amsterdam Marathon, right there, right there. Amsterdam Marathon, my first marathon, and in case you haven't seen it, uh, man, so many, so many great lessons from that race. All right, thanks for being here, thanks for watching. Seek beauty, work hard, and love each other. See you tomorrow.